Hi everyone, this is an overview of observational assessments um, and in this short video we'll talk a little bit about uh, what observation is and we will talk about how it's used within the cycle of assessment. So first things first, uh, we've already talked about this in class but there are two key forms of observation that we use in, as assessments in our classrooms every day. The first one is informal observation and the second one is formal observation. We've already talked about this in class, but most of our elementary and secondary peers um, don't quite comprehend um, the notion of formal observation. And the rest of this slide deck will be about formal observation. But I wanted to stop for just a minute and talk about informal observation. Informal observation is a key strategy that all educators use to make on the fly, in the moment decisions um, while we are teaching and assessing in our classrooms. Um, we take in things like body language, eye contact, um, focus on task, uh, whether or not the student seems to be participating, whether or not they seem to be confused, whether or not they seem to be engaged. Uh, whether it's time to take a break. Uh, we use all of these, all this data that we're constantly taking in in our classrooms to make moment by moment decisions. Unfortunately, I can't really teach you how to get better at informal observation. Um, it's all about the art of people watching and really learning what it's important to take in from students' body language and verbal interactions um, and what is just sort of extra data that you don't really need um, in this moment. Um, I strongly suggest if you feel like you're not very good at informal observation, uh, that you just do some practice people watching. Uh, really get curious about what people's body language, interactions, verbal interactions, and nonverbal interactions really mean um, in what they're doing day to day. Uh, it's very fun to people watch in a classroom, especially if you have um, the opportunity just to sort of sit back and observe for a period of time when you're not actively teaching. Formal observation is planned. Um, it's observation that you intend to do. It has a particular goal. It has a particular focus, and it's designed to answer a specific, a particular question. When we talk about observation strategies, um, we're talking for the most part about formal observation. So first things first, high quality formal observation could definitely be used for both formative and summative assessments. And it is used for summative assessments all the time in early childhood. Um, it has to be very intentional, whether it is used as a high quality formative um, uh, strategy or whether it's used as a high quality summative uh, strategy. You have to know exactly what you're observing for, what you're recording, how you're recording it, what you intend to do with that data, uh, because what you intend to do with the data makes a difference on what kind of data that you will collect. Um, to be able to do formal observation in a high quality way in which it's respected and valued as an assessment strategy, it not only has to be intentional, it has to be super well planned. And I don't say this very often in my classes, but I have a don't you ever on this slide. Um, and once you have really processed how to do high quality observation, I really want to caution you against ever writing a lesson plan in which the plan for assessment is observation. Am I saying that you can't use observation as an assessment strategy? Absolutely not. I'm just saying that if the plan for assessment just says something like, I will use observation for formative assessment because it is developmentally appropriate, or it just says assessment plan observation, that um, you do not have a high quality assessment plan at hand. Um, for assessment to be used effectively, uh, I'm sorry, for observation to be used effectively as an assessment strategy, you absolutely must be intentional and it must be well planned. So what does intentional and well planned formal assessment look like? 
Well, the first question to tackle is where does assessment fall as a strategy within the cycle of assessment? So we've been talking about the cycle of assessment, assessment planning, leading to the task that we have students to do, leading to the data collection and organization process, leading to analysis, and finally leading to application, which brings us back in the cycle. I think it's really important to note that observation as a strategy of assessment is essentially a data collection strategy. It is how will you collect the data? Um, the tasks involved with assessment are wide and varying. And um, the tasks involved with observation are the entire breadth of tasks that you could potentially have um, uh, in the cycle of assessment itself. So to say that we're using observation does not at all say what we are having students do. It tells um, the person who's reading our lesson plan or it guides our own practice and how we plan to collect data from whatever task it is that we're having students do. So let's take a look at what observation looks like within our assessment cycle that we keep talking about. <clears throat> so what do the tasks look like? I just mentioned this on the last slide. They're a huge variety and huge breadth of possible tasks that we might use observation strategies as a data collection um, uh, strategy for. Those tasks might be embedded in the day-to-day -day learning. Observation is frequently used for embedded tasks because students are actively engaged in tasks related to their learning. Um, and it is not difficult as the educator or um, a co-teacher in the classroom to use observation to record what is happening while students are engaged in embedded learning tasks. Observation can also be used as a strategy for non-embedded tasks. These are tasks in which we pull students out of their day-to-day -day learning and have them do something for us um, <clears throat> or engage in some play. Um, and the purpose of that task is for us to take data via observation. So once again, the tasks can be embedded or not embedded. And they also can be structured or unstructured, or as we prefer to say in the field, authentic or naturalistic. So structured tasks are ones in which we give students something to do, and then we record data on what it is that they're doing. Once again, structured tasks can be embedded or not embedded. Um, we could give children in the course of a math lesson counters um, and patterning cards um, and ask them to engage with them. That's a structured task. Um, and that task could be embedded, as in it's part of our math lesson, or it could be not embedded. We pull the student or a group of students after the lesson and give them these materials for the sole purpose of taking data and conducting assessment. We use observation all the time in authentic and naturalistic tasks. Um, these are tasks that happen as the normal day-to-day -day in the classroom, and this is where all of your sort of play-based assessment, um, observation of play um, types of assessment would fall, which are super common in preschool and younger. There are three main data collection or documentation. I should stop and, and say that data collection and documentation are the same thing. Uh, we prefer documentation as a term in early childhood because it feels more whole child, more holistic, um, but essentially documentation and data collection are the exact same. The three big ones um, for observation are anecdotal notes, running records, and sampling strategies. We talk about event samples and time samples. I'll discuss all three of 